and I believe that you too can do all things, no matter what your voice seems like. Some of you are very good in your shower. You know, maybe you, when you're using the battle, you know the hymn, you know the song, you know, and anytime you sing, you feel the presence of God. And when you come in, before, if you come to the house of the Lord, you're shy, you're letting the enemy want to put your light off. You want the enemy to tell you to be quiet. Don't say something, you will mock you. Nobody cares. Remember, in the presence of the Lord yeah. is fullness of joy. And we come before God. We come to we come, we come collectively. We come to worship. We've come to praise him. He knows you in your shower and he wanted to know you more in his house in Jesus' name. So I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. So anyhow, anyway, I'm going to praise him in Jesus' name for my God is good and his mercy endure forever. If he hasn't been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would have been today. So I praise him. I excuse you, my friend. And you can tell your neighbor, excuse me a little bit, because I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him anyhow. Oh, I don't know whether you know my story. I just wanted to tell you, look what the Lord, look me, look me this one. Look what the Lord has done. Don't let the suit, don't let all that fool you. Look what the Lord has done. When I'm struggling with praise, it was his breath in my soul. When I was struggling to move, it was he who gave me the enablement. When I couldn't lift my head, he was the spirit that was able to raise me up. So he raised me up so I can stand on the mountain. He gave me a voice so I can declare, so I can shout, so I can magnify the name of the Lord my God. So I give thanks to God. Look what the Lord has done. He has healed my body. He touched my mind. Oh, he has set me free from any shackles in Jesus' name. Praise be to God. Jesus loved me. This I know. I don't need somebody. I don't need you. Because I know. And excuse me this one. I'm going to point to this place. Because I don't want someone to say, oh, you're pointing at me. I didn't do that. I'm pointing over here. You know, I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you say. Look at him. He's just not good. I don't care anything you say. I know that my God said I'm good. I know that my God said I'm loved. I know that my God said I'm accepted. I know that my God said I'm forgiven. And that, therefore, that settles it. In Jesus' name. Amen. That settles it. Amen. You've been coming to church and looking for something. And the Lord is here. And you've been keeping your eye away from the Lord. No wonder the storm of fire has been swallowing you up. You have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. You worship God with your lips, but your heart is not with Him. I don't know, I'm not talking to anybody here. I'm, I'm just saying, those of you on the Zoom, you're saying, I'm just talking to me here. You know, please, I'm talking to myself. Hallelujah. Sometimes the job of a pastor is difficult. You don't want to counsel people because you don't want to preach and someone say, oh, because you counsel me, I talk to you about my story, you're preaching. No, 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 I'm just talking to me this morning. Because like I said, you don't know me like that. You know, any pastor who tell you that, you know, all is well, everything is okay. You haven't seen that person. They might tell you from the pulpit, but believe not. I tell you, I got things I'm dealing with. I got situations that I'm dealing with. I got high blood pressure. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm, can I be honest with you? I got high blood pressure. If he hasn't been for the grace of God, I don't know where I would have been today in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm walking through all this thing by faith. Not because I don't have faith. My faith in Christ is what has gotten me this far. There's some time that they gave me wrong medication that would have destroyed me or this and that. But because of my faith in Jesus Christ, I'm here and all is well in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I don't need it to be ashamed or letting stuff or letting situation or make you feel like, no, you got faith. And faith is beyond what you can think. And we have a vivid description of faith. You have faith this morning that when you sit on that chair, you didn't even know who designed it. But you have faith this morning that when you sit on that chair, this chair is going to hold you. You can lift your hands and you know nothing will happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We have faith this morning that when I get up to drive, I'm going to get to church. You might not know, but you didn't get here by, by yourself. It is God and your faith that God caused you to get here safe and sound. Praise be to God. It is the Lord mercy. And I've got faith in Jesus' name. So this morning, I want to talk to you. And part of the message I've been doing 
about your assurance, Jesus' assurance for you. And also in conjunction with the message that Jesus has for you. Which one are you today? And which one would you want to become? I don't have a definite title for today's message. But permit me if you see me going all over the place. The Bible says, now, in the book of Hebrew 11, it says, but now, faith is the substance of the things you hope for. The evidence of things you have not seen. The evidence of things you have not seen. Now, we have many of us who talk about now faith is the substance of the things you hope for. What is your hope in? What are you hoping for? I can come to Matthew 6, 33. He said, but now seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be harder to you. But now seek folks the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All things will be harder unto you. Mark 11 from verse 23 says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall sit unto this mountain, whosoever, I don't know what mountain, is standing before you and your breakthrough. I don't know what mountain is standing before you and your destiny. I don't know what Goliath is standing before you or has been there for far too long. But verily I say unto you, whosoever, whosoever mean who, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt This morning, I want to talk about believing. I want to talk about believing. A lot of people come to church. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe in the word of God? A lot of us come with various religious mindset or religious or whatever mindset. But do you believe? in Jesus. Do you believe in the word of God? Believe in, in miles. When the Lord God said in the book of Luke chapter 9, when he called the 12 to himself, we talked about that last week. He did what? He gave them authority. Authority means power delegated. He gave them authority. Oh, hallelujah, let's read Hallelujah. And then he called the 12 together and he gave them power. Number one, power. And what? Authority over, hallelujah, Lord, over all devils and to cure all diseases. So there's nothing incurable. There's no disease incurable. But for them to come, they got to believe in him. They have to believe in who has called them. Do you believe this morning? They have not done that. Remember, this is a seasoned fisherman. Bunch of fishermen. These are not PhD people. These are not people who have any theology degree or whatever. They are not even regular church goers, but they are students of the word who are just going by and they know what the word of God said. And now they've seen the master and they believe. And here he gave them authority. Imagine me telling you today, says go into the world, preach the gospel. There's some who say, okay, I hear you. I hear you. Look who this one is talking about. What does it say? I should go into what? To preach what? To tell who? Do you know what problem I have? Do you know the situation that I'm dealing with? Do you understand that I'm not a good speaker? But here, none of them complain. He gave them power and authority over them. 
demons. Cast every demons out. And to cure any disease. And these folks obey him. Obedient is better than sacrifice. They almost, they, that means they believe completely in Jesus Christ. They believe God and his word. They went out. Hallelujah, Lord. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Where are, we? Where are we? Praise be to God. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom and to heal the sick. And he told them, take nothing for the journey. This requires faith. Take nothing for the journey you're about to embark on. I don't know where I'm going. He's sending us out. We can't even take nothing. But we believe. We believe in him. We believe in the king of kings. We believe that you are the son of the living God. We believe. Let me make it simple for you this morning. It's a thing that little children here can even testify to. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him will what? Will not what? Perish. Whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have what? An everlasting or eternal life. Whosoever believe. Before Jesus there were many beliefs. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. There are many beliefs. Even in today's church there are many beliefs. We have, we have different names, different preachers with different style, different philosophy, some this way, some that way. But the thing is that if it's not exactly how Jesus said, the enemy is going to capitalize on something. And it's going to make you to mislead the people. That's why Jesus said, I know my sheep. And my sheep, they know my voice. And the voice of another, they will not listen to. When a pastor, his job is to prep you, to lead you, to make sure that you know that he is not the way. I am not the way. Some can pray for themselves. And this is not a church. If you're looking for a church, come let me lay my hand on you. This is not a place. And this sermon shall follow them that believe. No, listen to me this morning. Then that believes. Plural. Not one person. Not one person that was called. Them that believe. They shall lay hand on the sick. Mark chapter 16 from verse 15. They shall lay hand on the sick. And the sick shall what? Recover. You are able to do it. You have the authority. You have been delegated the same power. I got a job to do is to shepherd you, to nurture you more and more. But you got a job. You will go proclaim, preach the gospel. You come in contact with someone not feeling too good. It is not a time to negotiate with the enemy and say, "Oh, I know. In this nation, there's so much problem. You know, there's a calamity everywhere. You know, oh my God, oh my God." The devil is just killing people. This day. Oh my God. What is happening? Global warming. Oh my God. You will speak with a new tongue. You notice anything that is not of God. Speak against such things. Rebuke anything coming after. Just imagine as a mom this morning. Sister Charlotte, you got a, a, a beautiful girl in your hand this morning. Imagine your daughter not feeling too good. When you go, hey, <laughs> what is wrong with you, this child? Oh my God. You know that something abnormal is happening. You will speak in Jesus' name. Even though you're going to take step by faith to go to the doctor. But you're already prepping this child. <laughs> no, you will live. I don't know where this fever, I don't know where this thing is coming from. But in the name of Jesus Christ, it is well with my child. In Jesus' name. This is how God sees you. And God says, it is finished. You already prophesied to Isaiah. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. It is a common prayer these days. No weapon from against me shall prosper. No weapon from. Do you believe? Do you believe in what you're saying? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Any tongue 
has risen up against me is condemned. I am loved. I am accepted. I am forgiven. I have been redeemed in Jesus' name. If God is able to even do that for the chief sin of all, which Apostle Paul described himself, who persecuted the church? Between you and I, which person have you killed? Who did you kill? Apostle Paul was a specialist. He specialized in hand and kill. And yet, the grace of God. I am not meeting sin. Sin is sin. Today's world we exaggerate. You are lying. There's no exaggeration. You look for dictionary code. We just exaggerate it just as you know. A lie is a lie. And all is sin. And that's what the Bible tells us in the book of Romans. For we all are sin and are falling short of the glory of God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank God for his grace. I was once blind, but now I can see. Do you believe this morning? Do you believe? For God did not send his son into this world, but he sent his son that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. I believe there's power, there's such waste today. We have that power, but we waste it. We're not taking charge, demanding, praying for our nation, interceding for our community, praying for one another. When there is a situation, they will knock on your door. I got someone, I know someone who can stand in the gap. Someone should come to you for an advice. Unbelievers should see you and hold on to your skirt and say, show me your God. I want to know your God. There's something about you, this man. What are we doing today? Who should not believe in him? This disciple in the book of Luke chapter 9, they take nothing for the journey because they believe. They believe. By faith, not faith, is the substance of the things you hope for. The evidence of the things you've not seen. They sent us out. I don't know where we're going, but I believe in Jesus' name. They sent power that raised Jesus from the dead. They sent mighty Holy Spirit is here and is going to quicken my mortal body in Jesus' name. I believe in Jesus' name. I believe I will eat any deadly thing. We see many deadly things all over the place today. We see it all over the place. I will eat any deadly thing. It will not harm me by faith in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. I believe. So I encourage you, friends. I encourage your family. I don't want to stay too long today. I'm just setting something up for next week. This gospel is not with man's wisdom, enticing man's wisdom. But this gospel, this gospel is demonstration of power. There's power in this gospel, this good news. When we step out and proclaim Jesus, there's power that backs everything we are saying now in Jesus' name. We have many people all over the church today. Like I said, a lot of people is about elite, about the club, about the size of the church, about there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not pulling. It's about how. But God is not a respect of person. Do you believe in his word? Where two or three are gathered together in his name. Do you believe? I'm not saying that because, oh, maybe. No, I'm telling you. The same message I'm preaching here today is the same message I'm going to stand if there's 5,000, 50,000 people. The same message because I'm being led by the Spirit of God to tell you the truth. And everything I'm telling you is the same thing I do. We're coming this morning so hard on my son this morning. We're so hard on him. It's like whenever you step out. Step into God's blessing because you need to understand who you are. Don't worry about who sees you. 
or what they're gonna say. Step up, be bold, be bold like a lion, be strong, for the Lord our God is with you. Step up in Jesus' name. If you're gonna be a basketball player, step up big in Jesus' name. It requires a lot of discipline. You want to have a great mind. You got to step up big by faith in Jesus' name. If you want to be the best student, you got to step up big. That means seeking, seeking information, working harder, doing everything necessary. You want to be the best leader, not a boss. I don't use the word boss. Those people push people around. They just tell you, do this, do that. They don't know you better than themselves. Be the person who lead and all the follow. Jesus is a leader. He lead. He doesn't tell you to do something he has not done. You can walk on water. The work you see me do, greater than this, you will do as well. So Jesus said, Amen. Amen. These things here, we need to look inside our heart, our mind. What have we been believing on? What form of doctrine have we wrapped ourselves in? Following the footprint of Jesus Christ. Blessed are those that are hungry and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Be filled with God's goodness, God's glory. And next week we'll talk about that in the book of Galatians. Galatians 5.22. You can search it when you go, you go home. Ask yourself, are you bearing this fruit? Are you bearing fruit? If you're not, you got to come to John chapter 15 and let God prune you. And pruning can be very difficult. Let God prune you. Some don't want to be pruned. Whom the Father loved, he chased out. Hallelujah. I'm stopping here this morning. Praise be to God. Hallelujah, Lord. I hope this morning, this message this morning, is, 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 is has reached out to someone and blessing someone this morning. And like I said, I'm talking to myself. I'm not pointing finger and nobody look at me. All those hands coming to me. I'm talking to me this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise be to God. It's so important that we take the word of God very seriously in this last day. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise be to God. Take the word of God so seriously. Run it with the word of God. Run with it. Practice what you're hearing. Be the doer of your, the word, not hearing. So many people hear the word. Yes, the Lord says it's not a cheerful giver. Oh, it's time to give. Oh. No, no, no. Be ye the doer of the word. Be ye the doer of the word. The Lord of a cheerful giver. Our pastor, you're going in a different territory. You've been preaching a good sermon. Say, what are you talking? What are you talking about giving? The Lord love a cheerful giver. It's not me who said it. Jesus said it. Give love recipro reciprocity. It shall be given back to you in good measure, pressed down. That's what Jesus said. And we talk, we sing it, we dance, but when we put our hand in our wallet. And we need to tap the card. We need to look at it. No, minus, 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 minus. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's too much. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know? Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, don't let the right hand say what the left hand is doing. We have all those scriptures we can quote all those things. But remember, faith is the substance of the things you hope for, the evidence of things you've not seen. Prove God and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word that has come forth this morning. I thank you for every hearer this morning. I pray and I thank you that the word that has come into their heart will produce fruit. We pray for a hundredfold harvest in Jesus' name. We pray that the rock of the evil, it will never rest on their lot in Jesus' name. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that they are entering the season of harvest, O God. They are entering the season of great increase. I pray for permanent joy, permanent miracle, permanent anointing and solution in the life, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing already. In Jesus' name, amen.